Hey y'all, been thinking about this, uh, I've obviously I've made enchiladas before, I made a video on that, and um, I've even made shredded beef enchiladas before, but I've never done it this way. Um, I've been sitting around thinking, and uh, I think I came up with something that's going to be pretty good. I wanted to uh, have you here experimenting with me to see if it worked or not, but what we're going to need, or what we're going to make is shredded beef uh, enchiladas. And what we're going to need is some good roast, I got a sirloin tip roast there, and uh, some corn shells, an onion. Some, I got some Anaheim peppers, I got some jalapeno peppers. I'll be honest with you, with you I wanted some uh, poblano peppers too. Um, and you could use green peppers, red peppers, any kind of peppers you like, but um, the store I went to didn't have any. It's so hot outside that I couldn't drive around looking for them, so I just, that's what I settled with. Got some uh, El Paso enchilada sauce there, uh, commercial stuff, some Rotel tomatoes, and two different kinds of cheese. I've got uh, sharp and I got mild cheddar both. And then I got uh, a little V8 juice. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook this roast in the crock pot. I'm going to take the roast, I'm going to add the V8 juice, I'm going to cook it in that, I'm going to slice the peppers up, put the Rotel tomatoes in there, put the onions in there, probably put a little garlic, salt, pepper in there, and I'm going to let it cook in a, in a crock pot. I don't know how long it's going to take. I guess, you know, I guess it takes five, six hours, something like that. But however, you know, however long it takes, uh, you're... you're cookbook with your crock pot says that's how long you're going to cook your roast depending on size that'll matter too um you know the size of the roast will matter so anyways that's what i'm going to do let me get some things cut up get it put in a crock pot um or i'll show you putting it in a crock pot so you know how i do that and uh, we'll get this cooked up make some enchiladas all right so this is the insert out of my crock pot i got the roast in there i uh put some uh, non-stick on there you want to spray that real well obviously <clears throat> just to show you the chop of the uh, of the vegetables there, I got four cloves of garlic, got those peppers, and got those onions. And uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to scoop those in on top. Now he's going to cook up with this with this roast, but in the end we're going to strain these vegetables back out of it and uh, shred it up with with the beef. And that's what we're going to roll in the enchilada. So keep that in mind when you're picking peppers and things like that. <clears throat> and then I got some V8 juice. I've actually watered that V8 juice down just a little bit. You want to put about a cup of water in there, V8 juice, whatever you want to use. And then I'm going to put these uh, Rotel tomatoes. I just love Rotel tomatoes. I'm put those on top, just like that. All right. And then I'll put it in the crock pot. I'm going to start it out on high, probably keep it on high for an hour or two and then cut it back to low. Monitor it every few hours, and I think it's going to take about five or six hours to get it done. And uh, after that, we'll make some enchiladas. They should be good. All right, I ended up cooking that on the uh, in a crock pot for, like I said, on high a couple hours, and then after that, probably uh, start at four to eleven, about seven hours. All right, and uh, I wish y'all had smell o vision. I wish you could smell this. This stuff is just incredible. I'm going to pull this out here. It's late, so I'm not going to make this today. Um, what I am going to do, though, is put it in the refrigerator. and See, I'm peppers and all, they cooked up nice. So, you see me, we took the, took the roast out. Got it out. Yes, that looks very good. And again, I wish y'all could smell it. it. smells just incredible. And then what I'm going to do is take this, uh, take this broth. Because when I make these enchiladas, I don't want them to be too watery. So, what I'm going to do then is take this... Uh, this right here, run it through a strainer. Let's turn this camera. There we go. Make a slight adjustment on the fly. So, that's what I'm going to do. And you see I got it in a bowl. I'm going to put it in the refrigerator overnight. You necessarily wouldn't have to do this because, uh, you know, if you wanted to make your enchiladas now, you could. It's just gotten late on me. But uh, when we come back, we'll... Uh, I'll show you what I have in, in mind, how to make the film. Man, I've been thinking about this all night. I got up, first thought of my mind this morning was these shredded enchiladas, these shredded beef enchiladas. I thought, boy, they're going to be good. So what I did is I pulled the uh, meat out of the refrigerator, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to make the filling. All right, um, It's been in the refrigerator all night long, so I just put that meat in, uh, warmed it up just a tad to get it to pull a little easier. Hopefully it pulls a little easier. Um, but you got a big chunk. I want this thing in about half. To be honest with you so um, get a real knife be prepared but cut it in half because I don't want that long of strings you know what I'm saying 
I don't want it to, you take one bite and you pull all the meat out of it. So, cut it into some chunks like that, and then uh, just get you some forks, pull it apart. And you can see I didn't heat it up, heat it up. I just put a little warmth into it just so I could get it to pull a little easier. And I don't want any big chunks because, again, I got small corn tortillas. If you could find bigger ones, then you could probably get away with a little more. But I just want to shred it up real good. Mm, 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 this stuff smells so good. And this is, you know, this next step, this is going to be to your liking. So you get that shredded up real well. And now let's take some of these uh, onions and tomatoes, some of these peppers. Yeah, there again. Try to be prepared. Be like me, hungry, trying to put this together. Look at that. Tell me that's not going to be some good enchilada mix right there. Stir that up really well. <coughs> This other half of this meat, I'm probably going to turn into barbecue beef. Because this filling, this stuff will go a long way. Find out something good to do with these peppers and these onions. But, look at that. Oh, man. Sometimes, boy. It's lucky. I'm lucky. I tell myself all the time. Brother, it's a good thing you know how to cook. Yeah, a little fat in there. Let's get that out. Throw that out of there. Look at that. All right, let me reset and uh, get my uh, tortillas and stuff ready, and we'll come back and roll these things up. I think we're going to make something that's pretty good. All right, so I've taken my shells. I put them in the refrigerator like an idiot last night, so I hope that didn't ruin them. But just take your shell. Let's lay some of this filling. Man, alive. I know I keep going on about it, folks, but I just, I've been thinking about it, and it looks like I thought it would look. So, let's turn them up. And that's all you're going to do. Like I said, I put them in the microwave just for about a minute with a wet paper towel just to get them a little bit softer. Stuff them pretty good though. You don't want to roll them up tight, you just want to kind of fold them over because they'll tear. Alright, well I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me roll all these, but I think you get the idea, you get the drift. Just make up some filling however you want to do it. But, <clears throat> do one more here, man. Alright, well, let me get the rest of these rolled up, and then I'll show you what we do next. Alright, we got them rolled up. Everything worked out just fine, almost perfect. So we're just going to put some enchilada sauce on them now. I don't know if I'm going to need one can or two. You know, I need about one and a half cans. That's what I really need. I hate when I have to do that, because then I have to figure out what I'm going to do with this other half a can. But, <clears throat> I'm not going to shortcut the recipe. I want some enchilada sauce covering all of it. We need an old restaurant where they're trying to make a budget. There we go. That looks good. And then, you know what the topper is. It's a little product that makes everything taste better. No, not sour cream or ketchup. Cheese. And this is some of the uh, mild cheddar. Just put a good helping of that in there. And let's throw some sharp cheddar in there. Get a little bite. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover it in tin foil and uh, put it in the oven on 350. I'll probably cook it for, oh, I don't know, 45 minutes just to make sure everything blends together real well. So, there you go. That's going to be nice. That's going to be real nice. Let me get it wrapped up, get it cooked. When we pull it out, we'll uh, take a look at it and see what we got. I cooked them at uh, 45 minutes for uh, at 350, so let's pull off this and see what we got. Would you? All right. Well, let me uh, let me get a serving pulled out here, 
and uh, get it ready, and uh, we'll take a taste test, see what we got. But there again, I just wish you all could smell this because it is smelling so good. There you go, a little sour cream, let a bed of lettuce on it. Let's try this stuff here. Oh, that's real good. Like I said, I'd made them before, but the more I got thinking about it, I just cooked up the roast, mixed in some, uh, oh, like taco seasoning with it before, and made them that way. But I figured this would be pretty good, and it is. So, not that hard to make. Give it a try. I think you'll enjoy it. Let me know. So, oh, it's hot. There you go. Give it a try, folks. It turned out really well. And the nice thing is, you know, I'll probably get three or four meals out of that. So, anyways, hope you all are having a good day. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Bye-bye.